Welcome back to Before You Vote. And as much as I don't want to talk about this, uh, there was a debate this week. And uh, you may know. have missed it. Really? I, know. I think <laughs> only 67 million people watched it. <laughs> Give or take. Um, but I want to get your opinions on this because, first of all, what you guys do for a living mm -hmm. is advise people in this arena. I was surprised that it was so easy for her to get him on the defensive. And that's my perspective. Were you surprised by it? I was um, I was caught off guard at how well she did it and how easily she did it. But you agree that she did oh, that? Yeah. Oh, the, the, the rally claim, the <laughs> Nepo claim about his inherited wealth, you know, those things burrowed quick. Because that was his immediate response. He didn't even go to the question. He but went to defend himself. If you were preparing a candidate for a situation, wouldn't you have said to your client... You know they're going to do these things. You got to not dive into do it. Do not w take the bait. And would you have said those absolutely. words? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's 101. Don't run their campaign, run your campaign. Well, and the rally question in particular, <laughs> if he would have turned the table and said, why are you talking about crowd sizes? Yeah. You should be talking about your economic policy. It would have been an entirely different debate. Instead, right. he wound up in dogs and whether or not they're getting eaten by immigrants. I mean, we wound up in the theater so, of the absurd. It's funny you say that because in my head, my rebuttal was, you're talking crowd sizes. Let's talk about how many immigrants are in this country. You want to talk about a crowd size? Yeah. I'm serious. I, I, you You're look right. at the, and You're I exactly think, right. So what happens when, when that's happening? What do you do next? I mean, because she said she'll, she'll debate again. And he said maybe, maybe not. Does he not need to do another debate? I'm not sure there are any undecided voters anymore really? anywhere. I mean, I really think that what this debate did was give people permission to vote for her. And it's still going to be close as it gets. And the folks that were worried about whether or not she had it, that she could be the commander in chief, I think we're convinced she could. I think that was the tactical advantage to her during the, the then whole performance. Then why would she agree to another one? Because she wants to do it again to him. And she agrees, you know, she is thinking that he is not a disciplined candidate, which he's not. And he doesn't listen to people. I'm sure they were telling him everything we're talking about here. Don't go there hit these three topics relentlessly. And she knows he doesn't have that. So I'm saying it's probably not a bad idea for her to roll the dice on that I, again. If, if, to use my boxing analogy, if I'm Buster Douglas, I want no part of Mike Tyson a second time. <laughs> I'm serious. I, you know, I beat him once. Yep. Nobody thought I could. I've, that, there's my legacy. Yeah. But I didn't hear from my perspective. I know you, we all know where we're voting. Right. But I didn't hear enough about what and how they're going to do things. I wanted more substance, yeah. but we didn't get that. But do you think that what people did hear was enough to get them to decide? Is that what you're saying? I think it was enough to give them the comfort to make that decision. Okay. I, you know, but, but there were the, we're talking about economic policy. The question that should have been asked is, okay, I, I hear the down payment assistance on a new mm -hmm. home. How are you going to pay for it? Right. right. And the fact that that next question wasn't asked is criminal. It, I mean, it really is, and the American people should know. How, and well, and about Medicare and about Social Security yeah. solvency, that wasn't addressed. Do, does there need to be a debate? If there is another debate, mm -hmm. do we need to hear those subs, those questions of substance? I mean, the Medicaid question. You know that he goes, well, I'll have a plan on that. Right. You know, it's been eight years. You know, you you've had time. And, you know, there's nothing there. I would have a plan for him. I would say we need to go to a capitated system like access the, nationally. The one know? answer he gave that I thought, I, I mean, I thought was a reasonable answer was he said, I will work within the parameters of Obamacare if we can't come up with something better. I thought that was about the best answer he could give. If there's something better, we'll do it. But you're right. There was no this is better. But he's right. not. I mean, look at the way he went through the Afghanistan withdrawal plan. He goes, well, we had all these points, this point, and that point, and that. Never Ugh. mentioned. The problem is, Mike, he's not a detailed guy. He doesn't have the discipline to sit down and read, as she did, about what to say. He is a gut-level guy. And so you're asking for something that he's not capable of delivering. Because I don't believe he has a grasp 
on those policy questions. His goal is to be a gut level guy, surround himself with people that can give him good policy guidance, and then let them navigate and let him be the judge. All right, uh, it's such a fun conversation, and I hope we get to do it again before the selection's over. Thanks for having I, us. Hey, there's an opportunity. We'll All right, here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Maricopa County's recorder's race has been the talk of the election. We're sitting down with both candidates to get a look at their plan for the office. And first at the table is Justin Heath. This is Before You Vote.